Joining me now from Perth is Alexei Muraviev. He's an associate professor of national security and strategic studies at Curtin University. Welcome to the program. Um, help us understand then why, as Ukraine's defense ministry says, are there around 100,000 Russian soldiers near their border? Well, the Russians uh, consider Ukraine as a high-risk point, and they're also quite concerned about the increased NATO activity in the proximity of Russian borders, as well as the United States uh, military activity in the proximity of Russia's borders in the country's west, as well as in the country's east. Uh, also, as, as, as the Russians keep pointing out, the Ukrainian military mass about 50,000 strong army group along um, uh, Russia-Ukraine border. So the Russians use this as an excuse to simply say, well, what is if Ukraine will attack, attack us and we're just taking precautionary step? And that's what they normally um, uh, uh, argue when, when they're saying, well, it is our business to do, uh, to do what we're doing with troops within our own national national frontier. So uh, uh, effect effectively, the Russians are sort of using this as a, as a pressure point scenario, also because uh, uh, the Russians, by, by deploying this, this force to the Ukrainian border, the Russians are trying to apply indirect pressure on, on, on Ukraine uh, due to escalation of political and military tensions in Donbass region, including reports about the alleged seizure okay. of one settlement, which also involved the capturing okay. of 37 Russian nationals there. So the Russians, I think, trying to blackmail Kyiv uh, by means of massing troops on its border. Alexei, we heard, uh, uh, you know, the U.S. saying they're concerned, um, they're watching this carefully. Are they preparing an attack on Ukraine? Look, I don't think it's the, Russia, it's the best time. Russia are preparing an attack on Ukraine, just to be clear. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's the best time for Moscow to launch any offensive in Ukraine or actually engage in any sort of uh, host hostility right now. The, the main reason for that is uh, Russia's Nord Stream uh, gas pipeline into Europe is going through the process of certification. So there are um, uh, concerns that have been publicly declared and discussed in Moscow that should Russia undertake any retaliatory action, whether it's justified or not, uh, the likely response to Russia's action is going to be the termination of the certification and by that the suspension of Russia's um, uh, gas supply, increased gas supply to Europe. So the Russians have a very strong economic indicator that really contains their actions and will contain it until at least uh, the, uh, the pipeline will be certified. But even after the certification, I think the Russians would still exercise ex extreme caution because they wouldn't want for that to uh, uh, fall to yet another round of sanctions. Mm -hmm. uh, however, having said that, I think if, if, if the Russians will, will really be pushed or they would be given no option, I think they, they would certainly strike and strike hard, as it was indicated on a number of occasions by both okay. uh, President Vladimir Putin Alexei. as well as Russia's and if they did strike and strike hard, as you say, um, what would be the regional reaction and, and how could they stop this? I don't think there's going to be any sort of uh, avert reaction. So the promises by the United States to stand by Ukraine, I think, would be would be limited to those promises. At the end of the day, Ukraine, as, as sad as it may sound, is not pivotal to U.S. strategic interests. Yes, it's nice to have it as a buffer zone, as a, con a constant irritate of Russia, as, some, uh, as, as, as a point that draws Russia's resources. But I don't think the United States will commit its forces to fight alongside the Ukrainians. And not just because uh, the likelihood of Russia winning the war with Ukraine is extremely high, but it's also because it would put the United States in direct confrontation with a nuclear superpower. And any direct confrontation between nuclear superpowers has a very strong chance of escalating the conflict from conventional into unconventional or nuclear phase. And I don't think Washington is prepared to do that, also because it faces mounting crisis over Taiwan with China. Thank you so much for explaining it all to us. Alexei Muraviev, appreciate your time.